Greetings in the matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and welcome to Great Awakenings, the television ministry of the St. James Missionary Baptist Church of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I'm Pastor James T. Worthy, the senior pastor of the St. James Church, and I am certainly honored and privileged that you've taken this time to share our television ministry with us. I want to take you now into a service that was previously recorded right here in the sanctuary of the St. James Church, and my prayer is, is that you are blessed by what you are about to see and hear. Without any further ado, let's go to church.
the situation. God never fails. Man may fail you, but God never fails. He never fails. He's there. He's with you. He walks beside you. God never fails. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He's in the courtroom. He's in the doctor's office. He watches over you while you sleep at night. God never fails. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who would serve a God like this? Hallelujah. God never fails. He never fails. chapter number three. I'm not going to be long. Philippians chapter number three. Thank you, my Savior. Mm, thank you. My God here. Yeah. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Philippians chapter number three. From Philippians three, I want to begin reading at verse number seven. Mm, 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 mm. Jesus, thank you, my Savior. 
asked for it and you gave it to us. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Philippians 3, beginning at verse 7. We stand in reverence and respect to the word of God. These are the writings of the Apostle Paul to the Philippian church. Paul says, beginning at verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Hmm. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Can I throw it in for free? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Stopping at verse 14, that's what your Bible says, right? Verse 10 is the foundation. Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. From that one verse, I want to preach in here today with your prayers and of course, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Let, let me see if I can preach from this thought. What's the point? Yeah, what's... What's the point? You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Often, beloved, in our study and understanding of the scriptures, many of us, if not all of us, are guilty of taking a small portion of scripture and using it in a discussion, but in the process of losing a portion of, of using a portion of the scripture, we often fall prey to the trap of losing the central message of the entire passage. The words that have come to us for our text for this preaching moment is one of those passages because countless times we have read Philippians 3. And many times we get caught up in those verses. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching to those things which are before I press. We, we get stuck there. And many times we're quick to rejoice when we see those verses. We've become so emotionally contained over the fact that we can forget what's behind us and we can move on to what's before us and we can press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But I've wondered if anybody's ever stopped to consider just what is the mark? What is the prize? What is the high calling? 
After all, you know, it's one thing to rejoice over forgetting what's behind and reaching forth to what's before you, but if you are going to forget what's behind, why are you forgetting it? After all, there were some good days. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, yeah, we had some good days behind us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't try to sit and act like all of your days in the past were bad. We had some good times back there behind us but obviously something in front of us was so pretty that it was worth forgetting have I got some help here and then Paul says that not only do we forget what's behind we reach to what's in front of us have you ever stopped to ask yourself what am I reaching for after all if you're reaching and don't ever grab nothing that's a waste of energy oh boy this is deep this is deep this is deep this is deep. But it's in my time of study, Pastor Hines, as I ask God for a word for this day as we celebrate Family and Friends Day. The Lord showed me something almost short of powerful in Philippians chapter 3 because in the process of forgetting what's behind and reaching to what's before, Paul shows me that the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in this text is not heaven. The mark for the prize of the high calling of God in this text is to know him. Uh-oh, uh-oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. After all, let's be honest, there's nothing wrong with forgetting what's behind. Because truth be told, there are some things in my past I wish I could forget. Can I get some folk to be real with me? There's nothing wrong with reaching to what's before after all, if you don't have a goal, you're wasting life. Have I got a witness here? There's nothing wrong with pressing toward a mark. Because once again, that gives you something to hold on to. After all, I know I've got some Bible readers who read that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong. Anybody read that in your Bible? But it's given to the one that will endure Come on, somebody. It's not the one who runs the fastest. It's the one who crosses the finish line. Have I got some help in here? While Paul teaches us that we have not counted ourselves, have apprehended. Y'all give me about 15 minutes. I'll be done. While he counts that we have not counted ourselves to have apprehended and we have forgotten what's behind. We're reaching to what's before. The Lord sends me here to tell y'all the reason why that is so important is that the most important thing in your life is to know him. Have I got some help here? The most important piece in your life is to have a right and a real relationship with this God. And I'm not talking about a relationship that is limited between the call to worship and the benediction. I, I'm not talking about a relationship that is only at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. I, I'm not talking about a relationship that has only come when the music is right and the preacher's preaching my sermon I, and the choir singing my song. I'm talking about over in the midnight hour when the bills are high and the money is low and you've tried everything that you know to try and all you can say is, Father, I I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. Do you know him? Would you please look at somebody and ask them, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? So when I come to this desk, Deacon Dancy, and I ask us here today, St. James, what's the point? In essence, I've come to answer the fact that most of us need to know the reason why we do what we do. After all, why did you get up this morning and come to church? Why did you spend time in prayer and in reading of the word as hot as it is in here? Why are you singing and clapping and swaying and jumping? Why do you strive every day of your life to live a little better tomorrow than you did on yesterday? Here it is. The answer is in the text. Paul said, I do all of that so that I can know him. Now, it's important that I tell y'all right quick, and this is where I'm about to get in trouble, but let me preach it right quick and in a, in a hurry. There is a difference, beloved, between knowing him and knowing of him. And God help me preach right here with all unction and authority. We got a whole lot of folk in church who know of him. 
but when you really know him, you can stand with assurance in the midst of the storms of life and say within yourself, there is power in the name of Jesus. That's why some of y'all couldn't move because when you know him, you know he's not only has power to break the chains, but every now and again, he'll bust the chains off of you until you go in freedom. Would you please look at somebody and ask them, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Please, do you know him? Because there is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. There's a difference between knowing him and knowing of him. See, when you know of him, you know what you know based on situation. You know what you know based on what somebody told you. You base, you base your knowledge based upon what you have heard about him. But when you know an individual, now you've spent some time with that individual. You, you've got a relationship with that individual. You've gotten up and talked to that. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You already know what makes that person happy and what makes that person sad. You, you already know what it takes to please that person. Why? I know them. Reminds me of a story that was once told about a young man and an old man that was reciting the 23rd Psalm telling me the young man stood up and recited the 23rd Psalm and after he completed the recitation everybody stood up. It was a standing ovation in the house and when the old man came to the stage and began to recite that same Psalm, the story says that when the old man finished there was not a dry eye in the house. Somebody looked and said well what was the difference? It was the same Psalm somebody said here is the difference the young man knew the psalm but the old man knew the shepherd y'all ain't talking to me in here when you know the shepherd you don't have to wait for anybody to pump you you don't have to wait for nobody to prime you you ain't got to wait for nobody to push you you can say I know the Lord is my shepherd I know I shall not are y'all ready for this when the wicked even my enemy come upon me to eat up my flesh because I know him. Anybody in here can holler the fact that you know him. Just say, I know him. I, I know him. I, I know him and I just didn't meet him this morning on my way to church. I met him a long time ago when he saved me. I, I met him a long time ago when he healed me. I, I met him a long time ago when he delivered me. And when you hear me say, can't nobody do me like Jesus, I'm not singing it. I, I'm telling you from experience I, what the man did for me. Well, y'all, that's the message. Sit down, you're scaring me. That's the message. That's, that's the message. That's the message. That's the message that Paul releases to the church in this text. Beloved, it's not enough to know of him. In this day and time, you need to know that you know that you know <laughs> that you know that you know that you know him you know him so good if somebody tell you something you know whether it's him or somebody else <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know him so well that when things start happening in your life, you give God the praise instead of the devil the credit. When you know him, you can look up and say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. When you know him, you can say from experience, I've been young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor him see is there anybody who will holler at me right quick I know him yeah. you need to know him and in looking at Paul's testimony are y'all really ready for this word if y'all really look at this in looking at Paul's testimony in this text in light of the fact that his desire was to press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Paul said, I need to make sure that I know him. Mm -hmm. And there's just a few things I want to point out to you that I saw 
in this text that I think is important. Well, beloved, I pray that you've been blessed. I pray you've been inspired. And above all, I pray you've been empowered by the word that you've heard in today's broadcast. I'd like to take this moment now to extend a personal invitation to you to come and worship with us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James Church is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Each Sunday morning, we have Sunday school at 945. Our morning worship service begins promptly at 11 o'clock a.m. Join us on Tuesday nights for our Tuesday night teaching. It begins at 6.30 p.m. And then Thursday mornings for our midday Bible study that begins promptly at 11.30 a.m. If today's broadcast has been a blessing to you, I'd like for you to know that it is available on CD as well as DVD. All you'll have to do is contact our church administrative office at 252-442-2318 and be sure to request the service number that you see listed on the screen. Someone in our administrative office will be glad to assist you and will provide you with the information you need to obtain your own personal copy of today's broadcast. As always, I say thank you for taking the time to tune in to the Great Awakenings broadcast on Saturday mornings. And until next Saturday, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now and always. God bless.